can I share, can so I share some experience? Yeah, please, please. Uh, because one of the things that uh, I told you in the morning that uh, as a head of business education at IIT Bombay, I transmitted 5,000 hours of live instruction as it happened. The reason why we why we did that was uh, uh, Professor uh, Mr. C. Kohli, who is the chairman of Border Governors um, TCS. Uh, sorry, College of Engineering Pune, and uh, considered as father of IT, he said that I, CYEP students wanted IIT experience. Okay, and IIT experience can only come through live transmission, right? Not through recorded, going through a recorded things. So he said that when you transmit, I want our students to see that that. Uh, IIT processors also make mistakes. Yeah. It's okay to make mistakes, exactly. number one. The second one, he said, um, uh, I want my students to see that IIT professors crack jokes, that you don't have to be serious all the time. The third thing he said, um, at the same time, I want my students to see that every lecture is delivered on, uh, on time. Every lecture is delivered and delivered on time, so that he would ask, they would ask their faculty members, why, don't, why do you refuse? I'm just, uh, you know, it can happen anywhere. But he said that, it, you know, obviously if you're transmitting it live, we, we will ensure that we don't make mistakes and so on. Anyway, finally, the, the faculty members can also ask questions. Look, IIT students are doing so much work. Why are you refusing to do the homework? So he said live transmission. My problem was, if IIT students went and complained outside, look, I came through JE. What do you mean by transmitting the course to the outside world? Okay, it reduces my quality. It reduces my understanding. Whether there is truth, whether there is any truth or not, it will become the front page news. Okay, I have seen. Then immediately we will be asked to shut down. So one of the things that I wanted to do was, what are the things that we should do so that the students do not complain? Our students do not complain. In fact, we did it such a great way. Finally, the students ended up telling, would come and tell me, that person is very good. Why don't you please record this also? Because whenever somebody participated in this program, the quality of delivery became very good for our own students. It became very good for outside world also. Because it was so good, they you know, told us. But it took a lot of time. So what I'm saying is, if you want to um, spread this, there has to be quite a bit of marketing, quite a bit of convincing, hand-holding. Okay? One of the things that we used to do was, I mean very simple thing, as a faculty member, often I would just go and teach whatever I want. Right? I mean, there is some curriculum, there is something, but so long as you have the freedom. But here, if you have to do it online, it has to be delivered. I would like to tell people, uh, I would request all the faculty members, please give me if not daily schedule, at least a weekly schedule, or at least say that I'm going to teach three lectures on root locus, four lectures on, you know, practice plot, or three lectures on body plot, or whatever it is. So you have an approximate. So there is a requirement of some planning that happens in such courses, when especially when it is shared with a lot of people. So what I'm saying is, even if the, you know, although people said that MOOCs means it may be some 20 times and so on, even if it doesn't happen, even with a little bit more effort, let's say 20-30% more effort, it is possible to make our courses a lot better. And that is a <coughs> beneficial consequence of participating in all this and sharing it with a lot of people, recording it and so on. <coughs> it is a lot better, with a little bit of effort, it can be made a lot better and that will happen. The second thing is we used Moodle extensively. We conducted training for uh, the educators, the teachers, okay, you should, you know, go through this. In fact, one of the things we used to do was record every person and for half an hour ask the person to see. So it was a service. So this kind of services can be made available to everybody, which will benefit the teachers as well as students. And this kind of mechanism probably should be established in all institutions. Probably MHRD can think about establishing such a an infrastructure which will provide, even if you don't talk about high tech, high funda thing, just a little bit that can improve the quality of these courses immensely. Your delivery, 
uh, education experience. And <coughs> question. So the teachers have spoken to in other colleges and other universities. Right. Many of them, it's almost like a confession they tell me. You know, I, I didn't even know what my Moodle source was. Today. They came and confessed right. to me that they were not uploading what they were doing right. in Moodle. So, so why do they feel uh, that it is something of a burden to do? It? Now it takes time to do that. Uh, it, it, when I took over as the head of CD, there we used to transmit only three or four courses a semester. And um, in 2008, uh, fall semester, uh, autumn semester, 50 people had assembled. They were ready to deliver their courses slide. And Professor Ray was amazed. 50 people came simultaneously. I can't believe it. So what I'm saying is there is quite a bit of marketing work to do, quite a bit of um, convincing, hand-holding, hand hand-holding. Yeah, and, 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 oh, sort of, sorry, there is one other very important thing that I should tell. In all this, if you look at the effort involved in creation, creating a course, what are the components? It may be recording, it may be editing, it may be uploading, so on. If you look at all of that, and there is also delivery. One of the things we used to do was, I used to say that you can come and teach any number of times. We are ready to record every time, we are recorded, ready to edit every time. Even though that is a lot of work, I'm, I will happily accommodate you. Then what happened was, they, would, they used to come in larger numbers. The second time they did better, third time they did even better. The other thing that I did was, I told my, all my staff members, we are a service center, you can't say no to anybody. If somebody says, I want to do this, if it is yes, you say yes. If it is no, tell Kannan, Kannan will say no. So then what happened was, in fact, people started saying, oh, CD is such a great place. Everybody is good, except its head. <laughs> okay? Because I was saying all bad things. No, I can't do this, I can't do this. So what I'm saying is, we need to approach it in a systematic way. There is a lot of difficulty, but basically, people are good. They are hesitant. They are scared. But I think we should help them come out of it. If we try, we can uh, achieve it. That's why. <laughs> Sir, Eight, I ten, one sir. month, one month compulsory training, Man mandatory, mandatory training, training. Mandatory one month for all the students. teachers, right? For, 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 from the newest yes. one, sir, 25 mobile, years old, sir, 260, sir, use karne ke to hum danda 260 <laughs> years old, right? No, I'm, I'm telling you the fact. This is the reality. Yes, yes, if you do, if you go to the institutes, this is the reality. You have to make it compulsory one month at least ICT based training to all the teachers. Yes. Only yes, then it will, there would be some motivation, mm -hmm. then all those things are good, hand holding and other things, then automatically the things will fall like Training on ICT? Yes. On to, to the, the different tools of ICT? Yes, yes. I mean, they, they have to be prepared for this kind of education because they, I mean, we, we shall be facing now Gen, Gen Y, Gen Z students. So they are far, far ahead of us. So those people, I mean, like say, it comes from within. I, I am using ICT. It is it is my choice, right? But for majority, it is not the choice. So you have to have some compulsory training so of one month. After that, uh, probably so that's already written on that. That's already written there as a formal training. No, he is talking also. It is not formal training. About ICT. Training ICT. ICT. Yeah. That, that's why we are talking about the ICT enabled. No, not the enabled. ICT tools. Yeah, outside tools. That's why uh, what I mean by that. How to do the tech the technology. He's talking about this people becoming, for example, the simplest one being how to use PowerPoint. Yes. How to use Excel. Yes. Why are you talking yes. about pedagogy? Yes. No, no, no. What I'm use, just doing here is using the, all the tools, technology, incorporating pedagogical approach together. The tools and technology, training for tools and technology is must. Is must. When we go, this is a reality. When we go with the different engineering colleges, we have in Bhopal itself 85 engineering colleges. Right. So if you are going with that, this this is very much useful. Two to three months training using tools and technology. What he is talking about is every tools and technology, as well as the incorporating some of the pedagogical approach using this tools and technology. This is the total uh, one. Can so I make I, an observation? So this is practically. So I want to just take a little bit to to see whether we can reach it. So it seems to me that if teachers has to have to use technology in that, there has to be. Uh, I mean, he's calling Danda as well. I'm just calling it incentives or mechanisms for to use ICT in classroom by teachers. As a starter, 
<laughs> so is classroom I I so there is of course training for teachers on tools and technology that has been talked about uh, provided of infrastructure is talked about I actually if people agree we can put I think we need to so once you become in, uh, familiar with that I'm not too sure if all places would allow for example to say I will not give the next five lectures but I'm going to use condensed lectures so I'm going to sit in the classroom just like all my students are and I'll do it I'm not too sure if that enabling environment actually exists in uh, most places in fact, so many people are afraid that that will happen and they don't want to bring technology uh, actually it's a very hard thing uh, I've tried it in my own class it's very hard not to sit in the classroom it's it's good, good, good. even a 20 minute lecture to you said it's not getting bored forget about it <laughs> But I'm saying that we should, we should at least, uh, the, uh, uh, what something we should say, um, my, my view is, just to close this point, my view is that I don't think the answer of how, which technology to use, how to use it in the classroom is settled by any means. I think it's an evolving thing. But the right way to then approach it is to let multiple people, you try something, you try something, you try something, and some things then will emerge, at least if nothing else knowledge will emerge but I don't think even that enabling environment exists because most of us seem to be not using uh, this thing. So I would like to also besides the training and all somehow we have an environment where we all feel that let's try something. Maybe a lecture by him or him, maybe a uh, you know, flip classroom, maybe a quiz in between, whatever we want to try and 10 different things then hopefully some things will emerge. Does that look like something we can capture? Yeah. Because that will require structures, Quantification. will require... Yeah. Quantification will be a challenge unless we relate it to actual learning effectiveness in the class. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you are asking a very hard, hard question, but very re relevant question, but I'm saying at least, uh, so empower or policies, I, I don't know whether policy is the right word, to empower... Faculty to use use uh, lectures. No, I have also done that. I I proposed it in the other group that didn't take it. I proposed it in the same group. Yes. Can I can I share two experiences that have actually worked? work from a policy perspective, there have been some institutes where they said, you know, while we want to include ICT and all, one of the ways they made sure that it became part of the system was recognizing that that is, uh, that is equivalent to the existing system. Exactly. So, so for example, assessment marks like internal scores that come out of ICT, they say, I will recognize it. And so people use it. That's right. And, and if you were supposed to do 40 hours of lecture in your class, if you took 10 hours of her lecture and 5 hours of it, that will count as your lecture. Yes. It's important. I think those enabling things have to happen, otherwise most of us will, will not do that. So yes. that's what I'm saying, policy to empower faculty to use like, technical mechanisms, etc. Yes, please. Yeah. So we are actually a very young university, almost three years back we have been established. Actually we have made a policy, it's like a, you know, what people are talking about. I thought something like institutionalizing uh, this ICT thing, what we have done, is every faculty member has to develop his course and has to be loaded in a tablet which has to be given to the students okay in the process what happens is the, the teacher becomes accountable because you design your course and you have to deliver it in the classroom and you take the tablet to the classroom which has all the notes all the ppts all the questions with the answers and you can take assessments also using the tabs so i think that is the process of institutionalizing where uh, somebody was talking about supporting the institution gives an enabling environment to support faculty to develop courses and to deliver it and be accountable for you know all the processes that is involved so in canada i noticed that, i mean in the in north america i noticed that most of the colleges are getting more and more publishers where there's already a publishing mafia textbook mafia and all that uh, so they also give ICT material along with the book for the university. So when you buy a calculus, prescribed calculus textbook, it comes with a set of presentations. But that's only for the teacher to use in the classroom. You cannot share it with the students. And that's the one thing that students want the most. <laughs> <laughs> so Maybe we have this. We talked about some formal training program. We talked about if we can, if we agree, we can put this down that there has to be some mechanism, instruments, policy to enable and empower the, the teachers to not. It should be actually more that enthuse, excite some some such thing, not just 
now uh, that, that they use technology, different aspects of technology in their classroom. Hopefully better answers will emerge in due course as to what, you know, some models are there. We'll record that. I'll also put down to uh, what you were saying and what I think somebody else also said, that besides in your own classroom, and I think Kandan was also saying, if you develop courses for outside yeah. your classroom, that seems to put a kind of thing on you uh, that helps improve your own course because you are now facing a larger audience and so on and so forth. So which of course, again, if there is an enabling environment that every college will have to do 10% of school, is uh, some other student, then of course that college will do 10% there or some such thing. I, I'm not saying that we have the answer. <coughs> but if you put this down, is that an acceptable thing? That incentive again, uh, uh, incentive, policy, uh, whatever we want to call it, to support that teachers in one college, or to support uh, develop IT-based courses for, for external students. I think if we can do that, if all of us are supposed to put 10% of our lectures for external consumption, uh, you know, there can be a huge impact, you know, uh, and with, with all the data available as to how many students watch whose lectures, in some sense there's a marketplace <laughs> emerging of lectures as to who is going for what. Five lectures on the same topic, uh, uh, intro to programming, and whether my course gets more hits than uh, Fartex or Fartex gets more hits than somebody, would have, have its ramification. Probably good. So I'm putting this down. Sounds good? Yeah. Right. We have two, three points to at least say something. Other things you want to add? We haven't been. We have then left that, but I think there were these things we didn't talk about and assessment, lab projects, lab. Projects, lab part. Ha, ha. The, the biggest problem which we people are facing that is hands on part. In ICT, delivering lecture it's very good, recording everything is very good. But as far as hands on practice part is there, that's slightly yeah. difficult with this one. Virtual uh, classroom concept, uh, virtual lab concept yeah, already has been given. My suggestion is what we people are doing. We are uh, our institute is for PG students mainly for research like this one. But BTEC, Polytechnic students experiments which has to be conducted. We are selecting some of the good institutes, and our team is going there. In laboratory, one teacher is conducting experiment. Some 20 students are there. Really, the, the, the procedure which is being followed during the, the conducting experiment, everything is getting recorded. Say for one and a half hours, even students are asking questions. So complete experiment which is being conducted that we are recording and then we are putting on this web portal. So I think laboratory part now, at least even polytechnic, these equipments are not available at all. Even if it is available, teachers are not there. So some of the problems can be sorted out of real time if recording can be done of the experiment and then can be put on the website. I think this experience was around 150 videos we have recorded for different levels, just like a soil engineering level or say electrical machines level. So where really teacher is conducting experiment and friends are there. They are asking many questions of the even calculation part, everything is being done. So that can solve this liberty part also. So you're saying that you have an example, specific example, but you're saying that there is scope for improvement on projects and labs through the use of technology. Yeah, actually it can be good when experiments are being conducted. And second one, what we are doing, we are inviting good strengths in the studio also. Say just like robotics, if I'm saying. For robotics, strengths are doing that whole exercise of making robot and each and students are sitting at far away places and that is getting transmitted also. So students are taking participation in, in the science zone part also. At one particular point of time all specifications, all components of these robots, everything is being purchased, specifications are being told to the students and they are assembling, they are doing a real, real time assembly they are doing and students are connected to them even many of the questions they are asking. So this part also can be projects part now. Or project lab part can be conducted through this one. Even students are delivering for students. So I think many of these actually, there are different answers to it, but certainly lectures in the most commonly used aspect there. But certainly assignments, Anoop also talked about, there's a lot of things now in assignments. Uh, grading was talked about, so technology is emerging for even doing some online grading of even higher levels of skills. Projects, you are saying that there is something, this would have been a very my mind is a hard, hard thing to do online, but you're saying that something can be done. Uh, these are smaller matters of course management, but I think taking attendance uh, is certainly something where technology. But I don't think we need to enumerate the answers. If we say that in all aspects, if we 
push somehow that uh, please start using technology for this, for this, for this, for any aspect, hopefully better answers can emerge. If, if we feel that we can leave it there, then I think we can look at these other questions that we haven't yet talked about. So here we have two, three things, formal training, incentives to use ICT, incentive support to develop this so external, so you go external, so we are recommending that this could be something considered. These are all for improving our own teaching. And this is for improving the teachers. How about these kinds of things? Do anyone want to say something that we want to capture? Just one thing that we didn't talk this, we didn't talk about this. Allows us to integrate across different disciplines. Snippets of uh, video inputs can be used in the same uh, you know, class, but for different concepts, for introducing or strengthening or reinforcing different concepts. So, that's so, so actually, you can you can put it either here, you can put it either here. Actually, it allows the fact that you have the the stuff science. available on math, on sociology, on networks, on sociology, on graph you can do an excellent course in social network analysis. Now that allows you to design a course, you as an instructor who knows perhaps math but doesn't know sociology or knows sociology but doesn't know graph theory, allows you, enables you to design some interesting course. I mean, we didn't reach there, but I thought these are, these are the things that it is allowing which actually, um, you know, because we are in our country still very focused on just me doing my course better. I mean, because that is indeed the pressing need. There is no doubt 80% of the need is there. But I think another 10, 20%, these are really exciting possibilities. So I think so that's a big possibility even on the project stuff. No, okay, again, but here a word of warning. We should uh, flag this, and that is copyright issues. Sure. So in, in, in uh, foreign universities, for instance, <coughs> it's just a nightmare now, you know, because you don't know what is copyrighted, what is not. And each term, there's a whole message which runs to four or five pages. And then with very uh, penalized a of, warnings. A of openness. So, we started so that's abortion. right. So we should have this inbuilt openness completely in order not but to drive people away. For example, we had a course in technical uh, education. We are using some course from Stanford for the English aspect. Of it. I don't know enough English uh, writing to teach somebody. So I'm using ten of her lectures into this. But in any case, uh, I mean, but I don't know what do we. It is there. I don't know what do we need to say. It is an empowering and enabling this thing that you can use the fact that there's so much diverse content available with the caveat that we can only talk about uh, the content that is open, uh, openly and freely available. It actually opens the possibility of huge interesting design of the, yeah. the policy thing or the enabling thing that we can talk about, actually 80 to 90 percent of our colleges do not have the framework or the ability to design courses. I mean, it has to happen through, uh, through the parent university, and then maybe a teacher can do it, right? So if you're excited about it and you happen to be a teacher in the college, you can do it, but you still will not be able to do it. So I would like to actually agree, this has been my pet theme for a long time, that we need to empower teachers just to do some interesting stuff, not always be subservient to a to a parent university, some academic old foggy sitting and saying this is what ought to be taught. But I, this is, freedom, freedom, said, this has been my theme for a different freedom. reason. But I think it makes a lot of sense in the freedom freedom of teacher to uh, to have some ability to design new courses, leveraging perhaps the content that is available to make it more exciting, more relevant, more interdisciplinary, etc. Et I, I have one thing to mention. Uh, most of the engineering colleges or maybe uh, uh, polytechnics uh, I visited, I saw that uh, even faculty members are not aware of the good projects, how to how to allot good projects to the students even. Yeah. Now, now when we are talking about the new courses to be developed, at least uh, the faculty members uh, should have that much knowledge how to give a good, good project to the students. And most of the time the projects are being uh, purchased from uh, photocopy shops. So that is the bigger challenge before us. I think most, I, I have visited all these states, mostly all these states in India. If I, and this is the if I think teachers are doing projects, research projects and consultancy projects, I think that part can be taken care of. So, so also, I, mean, I think the point is totally right, except this is a, this is a chicken and egg problem. My feeling is, and if we agree, 
that you empower people, yes, 70, 80% can't do anything, right? But you don't have to always do something for the entire percent. 10% who are capable of creating something new should we not empower them. Yes, 80% will not be able to do. I have no doubt in that. But I'm saying that a lot of people are who are probably good, I've seen in some of these colleges, not every teacher, not all teachers are bad by any stretch of imagination. But they are they don't have the many funds to do anything. No, in, I, I mean to say, is it uh, we can create some kind of portal where we where the experts can suggest some of the good topics for the projects related to no. engineering uh, that 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 okay. may help. Uh, so these are two, two, two separate things. Yes. I would like to, if agreed, if agreed, I would like to put this that I think we need to in all this affiliating university framework because that has been one of the focus of this workshop. We need to build uh, capabilities. So framework which will allow faculty members to design new courses and leverage the fact that there is so much content of tools, etc. available to, to put together an interesting, exciting course through a set of things. After all, even Anup's lecture used Khan's Academy stuff, right? I mean, with all the Microsoft behind him, still he ended up using something in Khan, right? So, so good, good when, I was, when I was talking about Danda, then this design of new design new courses, this danda can come from NB accreditation also. There is one parameter ah, called yeah, teaching. Yeah, yeah. There is a parameter called teaching learning processes. There we can say when they write their program objectives, program outcomes, there we can say that in the course content they, they have to have ICT enabled. Oh, no. or, or in their accreditation framework, <coughs> they can have the, at least X percent of the courses of, of the courses. So this I think this I think should be a recommendation for. Record that if you can if it's noticing it, otherwise I'll take a photograph of it and then probably do something about it. So design and I think as uh, he was talking about projects that uh, there is a room for helping faculty members with the project work for their so students. Right? Projects and uh, Fatak had a very big uh, pro pro uh, this thing earlier where he was putting all these projects. Take love you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, so something like what that. What Professor Arora was saying, program hmm. objectives and program educational objectives. Most of the, I, 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 I had been with NBA and many uh, committees I visited. In fact, our faculty members don't know what are the program objectives so, and so program educational so objectives. They, they don't have any mapping. Their level is that much. It's so you can imagine. No, so so we can we can put not this only as, not only level. We made a system like system that. Like that. Yeah, exactly. the course, please so go and deliver it. Therefore, so if you make it that, there, so that all, yeah. Therefore, in teaching learning process parameter, there itself we can say there's a lot of room to talk in the learning world. That will get into a very different debate altogether. So let's do that. I still think if he can say something about. So we have something here. We have something to say here. Uh, let me put star so we remember this. We remember this. How about this community of teachers? That is an excellent point somebody raised that we can help. Teachers can help each other. Projects, for example, could be one, but I think there is. I don't know how to enable it, but clearly community building is one thing that the modern technology is doing extremely well, right? And we are actually laggards at it in the sense people like us uh, hardly are active in the media, social media. So I have, I have also a comment on Danda. Okay, <laughs> I talked about incentive, but I believe there is uh, because uh, on the one hand, one of the problems we have in massive teacher training, for example, is how many people are really benefiting by that? Right? Uh, how many people are freeloaders? They just come over. They think it is a vacation. Right? It's actually a problem in all these uh, teacher training programs, so we need to address this. So one of the things that I have been uh, you know, thinking about is, is it possible to make some, you know, why do they want to attend? Because if they attend, they'll get a certificate, it's going to help them promotion. So can we say that unless you demonstrate some minimal skills, which I will make available through whatever material I have, it could be Khan Academy, it could be spoken tutorial, it could be some learning material. I'm going to conduct a test. Unless you score 20% in that, you cannot come to this teacher training program. So if we do that, it's a dunda, right? But then what happens is, it will filter out all the dead wood, all the troublemakers. Then what you can do so is... Then put only those people in through the teacher's training right. program who have so certain so capabilities. Yeah, keep it very low, like 10%, 20%. Yeah. Demonstrated capabilities so demonstrate capability. that you can absorb. Then so then you can even conduct the so class. Yeah, then you can conduct the close class in a high level, flip yeah. classroom mode. You can say problem solving, let people... 
you know, now the same problem will be addressed from 100 angles because there are 1000 people. So prerequisite to enrolling in the Yeah, class. so what will happen is if the, if the class size big, gets bigger, the performance may actually get better. The experience may actually get better, which is very good for teacher training. So I, I propose this. So, so, so this, that's the this you are saying over here, you are saying there ought to be some prerequisite, strict prerequisite. I would say, I don't know whether you call it strict, I would say my, my prerequisite demonstrated capability. Right? That's what you're saying. You're demonstrated. Using easily enforced uh, available learning material. Capability. Such as self and this itself you can use ICT for it. Yes. And then conduct a test. Yeah, and you can use a game or you can to attend the workshop. To attend the workshop. You see, non-serious people should not be allowed to come to this because the way the workshop done. Right, right. Workshop should be targeted at those who really want to do something to improve their education. I think that point is well taken because I'm otherwise going, you are good as often as required. You are going to be addressing to people, the people who may not be interested in this. Mm -hmm. just, I think that's an excellent point. And Somehow so if we can do it for students also, that would be great. Is there a reward? I mean, should we think of a reward like recognizing people who have made the transition to this new model? Academic tourism. As a follow-up follow of that, could, could be this community, yeah, community of teacher helping continue. Helping community of teachers, huh? Yeah, is it like that. So, so as a follow up on that, by the, way, by the way, just before you continue, I proposed the same thing in the another panel, I got shut down. <laughs> <laughs> we are progressive. So, we, we make it compulsory, whosoever attends that workshop, we make it compulsory that you, uh, as soon as they'll come back, you have to train. Another 10 teachers over there. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it is, it is not. I think communities sort of develop when you derive yeah, energy some. benefit out of it. Why is my daughter on this and I'm not? Because she's deriving something out of it which I am not valuing. She values it. So I think somehow we have to make the community things always work when the community supports. I don't think you can force. You know, maybe initial little lollipop to register. <laughs> But after that, it has, has, to, has, to, has to support each other. Just one point with Professor Madhugula. Should we do this prerequisite right now when we are actually starting our, this thing with ICT? Or should we wait for some, some, some few years? You can, you can see, 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 in fact... You can say IIT, Kharagpur, I'm going to do it. No, no, no. That's, that's there. But should it, should it be right now? Should so it be right now? Is, what will happen, what, the way I believe is, if it is done, it is going to, maybe half the people will fail, let's say. They will certificate. Half the people no, fail. Half, uh, no, no, hold on. Many people will, won't be able to attend the, this, this type of uh, workshop. That's the, that's the main point. No, no, hold on. No, I, right. I think, I think the answer is... Yeah, they are creating is it a perfect timing, but if you start, if half people fail, hopefully they will come back. Yeah, they will come back. They'll do it again. They'll, 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 and hopefully they'll take it more seriously. Yeah, so you have yeah. thousands of people. You have a few thousand less in the first person delivery. Right. They won't be getting certificate. They'll be able to attend the workshop, but not certificate. I, I think if you upfront say that you're going to enroll in this program, but you won't get a certificate, that's, that's very difficult to enforce. He's make sure if he, if he was awake, somehow he'll make sure he sleeps. <laughs> He's got to at least get a good sleep. And his neighbors sleep also. <laughs> no, they think but it's a paid holiday. Okay. <laughs> any, anything you want to say? We are almost seven thirty, six thirty. We need to end. Any anybody wants to say anything? Yeah. I think ways to curate content, ways to amplify content, ways to do peer assessment. All those are part of the community. How about something like this? I, this is just we have uh, Facebook, etc. Teenagers. We have LinkedIn where I believe all these. How about teachers? Teachers in there whatever is, it is. There is there something. Isn't there supposed to be a teachers portal and there's also a professors being or something? Yeah. Like doesn't it help? Does it help? Does it help? help? Answer my name if I'm dealing with this course, I don't know what to do, or I'm dealing with this a very difficult student. E forum has to be sustained. So kind of e forum. No, 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 no. I'm talking social network yes. where we are helping each other. Not a not a portal which is giving me information to use for. Twitter is used for these. Be able to converse or so is there is there a place where only teachers somehow somehow we check out that he can enroll he can enroll but my my friend is not a teacher can't enroll no 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 can't enroll 
is there, is there something? Choice as an admin or a so you can Teacher, block them. Microsoft is something called partners and learning, and within that there is a only that only is teachers, so only teachers. I don't know the details. How is enforced? Uh, 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 no, no, the, the enforcing part is okay. Right. But, you know, based on the domain account. and based right. on lots of things. So is there some uh, you you, you said you don't know about it? Whether teachers are deriving some energy out of it? I think there are enough teachers deriving energy. Yeah, but part of it is community, right? So if you yeah. have Anna University and it's got 600 people who yeah. are teaching the same course, yeah. that community will de derive much more benefit, benefit than, than across. Than, than so across sub, sub community, so there, there is a JNTU community, yeah. there's an Anna University. Yeah, so, so even I if today you generate a special interest group on enabling and empowering people and all of us join as part of one group, it has to be sustained and in some sense. I think we need a startup. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> start up is this, is this a worthwhile idea? If, if there isn't too much in that, I think. I mean, I think so community is too serious. Yeah, to have a lot of that. Like, like, there were so many things yeah, like international yeah. processes. It just died. It was low for a few years. And now it's reviving again. So I think these things, of course, evolve, but I, it, it oftentimes needs some seed. No, but, but to make it happen. I don't of course, know. Not the, not the government document. Government was also saying, okay, it's not like before. Self involvement. Correct, exactly. Ron Creek and all the time. That's right, yeah. So we part of it, and then we also step out. Yeah, and there's so much social media to And I didn't tell you were there. <laughs> but almost all social media is, as of now, in my understanding, is totally uncontrolled. So I cannot be in an Anna University social media network where I know that everybody else is an Anna University teacher. I don't think, as of now, to my limited knowledge, it's just. Uh, but it's, it's, not really it's not really part of my mandate, but both Facebook and LinkedIn have closed groups yes. with administrators who can give access yes. to the Who can give access to higher education, educators on LinkedIn. So, yeah. Yeah. so those communities exist. So what we, is there any, any, no, any knowledge, uh, any sort of feedback? Are the, are the educators deriving benefit in education from it? FAQs or benefit, how do I deal with this? Are some such things happening or they're, they're doing it, they're doing exactly that. that. They are talking about their problems, they're sharing examples, they're sharing enthusiasm for each other. But it's what's, what's what's the example you mentioned? Well it's linked to it. I mean there's a, there are a number there are sub communities within LinkedIn and exactly, yes. Yes. Exactly. closed groups. And there are closed groups specifically closed group communities, right. And and there and there are closed groups for the use of technology in education as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, no, quite frankly, there's too many for you to keep up. So oh, okay, so I, there's too many. I have a very good idea. I have one observation which worked very well. Uh, this was, but of course, this was for a very high level course. Um, you create, the university has all the infrastructure create for creating wiki pages. So when you're teaching a course, you ask everybody in the course and maybe other interested people also <coughs> to have a login and become a member of that wiki page. They keep adding material, you know. So, for instance, if I do something in the class and I say at the end of it, okay, I haven't had time to go through everything in detail, I'm going to leave it to all of you to put in your ideas to share what you have learned. That worked tremendously and it was not too much work for me also because, you know, I could just write notes, upload it on the wiki page. And then let people also And let people chatter, share ideas, then somebody else will say, okay, she did this wrong in class today, the correct formula is yeah. this, this formula was written wrongly in the class and so I could post my assignments online and sometimes when I couldn't complete it, I could just use my video uh, recording or a voice recording of whatever I did and just post it there and said, okay, it's your responsibility. Next class, I'm going to assume that all of you heard this and before you came to class. I'm going to start by assuming that you all heard this. So, you know, for universities to create, but it should be plug and play, it should be very easy. So there's two, two aspects of our One is that somehow you're creating it for your own code, yes. which actually many of my colleagues use their wikis and so on, uh, piazzas, etc. You can also create wikis and let external people see it. Okay. I'm putting both, both there that you no. use technology for yes. your course and somehow we should make it happen more and more. Right. And, and, and for one absolutely easy way for this to happen is for the university to have a template. Which becomes yeah. very easy yeah, to yeah, use, yeah. Then, then which, yeah, absolutely. so that I don't yeah. have to spend Human any time, you know. Okay. So that's enabling, that's okay. empowering. Training, and I would also add uh, um, um, simple, uh, simple tools or, or support, let me just call it 
not just training, but you want simple stuff so you can plug and play. You do it so I don't, you don't have to call a tech guy. He looks at my wiki page up and so on, right? You don't. And, um, and what, what was fantastic was one of the students repeat upon themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the course to consolidate everything, everything he gave a kind of notes yeah, yeah. and they just sent it to me saying I Absolutely. want your uh, permission to put it on the web. Absolutely. Which I is what most ahead. of us end up doing. Exactly. Not knowing I said go ahead but I am not going to vouch um, for the correctness. But of course they are so savvy with all this. They say yeah, this yeah. course was given by blah 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 and the notes were taken by blah 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 and whatever mistakes are there, you know, we are not responsible. Uh, you know. No, no, that's... <laughs> Uh, uh, what was good? Uh, I see that this is beyond training. You want simple this thing to be able to do. Yeah, because uh, this uh, really simplified my life. But after two years, the university went through this formal revamping of everything, and then I stopped using it. <laughs> so, I think we need to close. Six thirty. Anybody wants to add something, sir? Now we have consolidated overall. But what are our recommendations point wise? We have not discussed that way. So I probably you can number them and then identify for question number one. These are the two points. For question number two, these may be good. If you can group them and fine. Otherwise, you may it is in this forum that can be decided. So I I agree with some recommendations. So this is sort of framework, but the recommendations that we have agreed on is uh, is on the formal training for this thing, incentives to do this incentives for teachers to expose their uh, incentives mechanisms for teachers to expose their material outside incentives and tool support etc so people use it uh, we talked about uh, that uh, that some enabling environment so people can design courses is an excellent thing we talked about uh, use of ICT for collaborative teaching which I think will Maybe it will get subsumed under this, but collaborative teachers should be under this. I had another star somewhere. Yeah. Collaborative uh, Well, projects. If you agree, we'll still put something in the same community. <laughs> it, just, it just seems to be this is the, you know, we, there are systems available, but I don't think we are using it. In India, at least. So That's my take on it, but if we are not, I don't Another think. thing is like we are together here physically. Hmm. We could have more webinars and also that we could ah. sort of collaborate and be part, more participating in such events. So, say that again? An online portal where you know we are sharing input, of course, will uh, sort of create a community, but um, more participation is required. So, for that, we could have some online workshops or. to capture it tonight and maybe made it to you perhaps. So we need somebody to do it. If students, it doesn't work. Huh? Wait. So can you just say what we discussed? In fact, many students replied in my class. We made it to you then I'll take a quick look at it. Yeah. We all registered, we mapped the back ID and the number of students. Okay. Yeah, but I no. Sort that out. Correct. No, obviously, sort it out. no, obviously, if you say, look, we have difficulty in implementing this blackboard. So, where is in the convention center, which is in between Ramada and the Sunday? I don't know. 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 I don't know.